Myself, Dr. Jibran Ahmad presents to you Simply Pathology and today we are back with a very important lecture. As you can see from the thumbnail, the today's topic of discussion is for the postgraduate MD DNB Pathology residents. So if you are an undergraduate student, you might stop the video here. So today's topic of discussion, we are going to understand about the curriculum of MD or DNB Pathology residents. And it is a very special episode because at the end I am also going to discuss the launch of our new course, Postgraduate MD DNB Pathology course in our own website. So stay tuned till the end of this lecture to understand more about the details of our course. So let, let us begin today's topic of discussion that is the MD DNB Orientation course. So we are going to understand about the MD DNB Orientation based on the NMC or the National Medical Council. So, as you know that the MCI has been dissolved and all the curriculum and the medical education of the country is now under the National Medical Council. So, we are going to see the latest guidelines as to the curriculum of MDDNB pathology. So, what is the curriculum that has been laid out by the NMC or the National Medical Council? So this is basically most importantly this is followed by the uh, you know MD uh, uh, you know colleges and also in some DNB colleges they follow the NMC curriculum but they also have their own curriculum. So let us try and understand about the curriculum that is laid out by the National Medical Council for the pathology resident. So a total of three years is allotted for MD pathology. That means you have 36 months. Now, out of 36 months, 35 months is allotted for different sections or subjects. And by the book and, or by the NMC, you should only get one month of time for revision. So, do not get disheartened or discouraged about it because uh, usually the colleges provide three to four months time for revision. At least three months time is given for revision. But some colleges, they give only one month time for revision in accordance with the NMC. So, very importantly, the curriculum is divided into the six aspects. So, firstly, you have to be posted in surgical histopathology, autopsy and in pathology tissue processing for a total of 12 months duration. Then you should be posted in hematology and laboratory medicine or in the central lab duty for approximately 10 months. Then you should be posted in cytopathology for around 8 months. Transfusion medicine or blood bank posting should be there for at least 2 months. Museum techniques and record management one month and basic sciences like your HPLC charts, electron microscopy, molecular diagnostics, uh, PCR, flow cytometry, uh, research techniques, cytogenetic techniques, all these special techniques should be given another two months. So the total of all these is 35 months. So this is the basic curriculum of the National Medical Council for the pathology residents. Now, one very important aspect over here is that, that uh, if I want to explain you the curriculum, the best way to explain the curriculum is to go through the exam pattern. So, how the exam is conducted and how the National Medical Council has given the guidelines for conducting the exams. So, let us try and understand. So, with this, we will be very, you know, uh, you know, comfortable and it would become very easy to understand how the curriculum of MD pathology is. So, we can see that there are three important steps over here. One is your theory, practical and oral and the thesis. So, you must be wondering that why have I included the thesis? Because for passing the MD DNB exam, okay, you have to appear for theory exam that is comprising of four papers. Then there is a practical and oral uh, examination that is conducted over a period of two days. And remember, okay, Thesis, without completion of your thesis, you cannot sit for the exams. So, all these three steps are very important and important component of your MD DNB exam. So, theory, practical oral viva examination along with the thesis is very important for passing your MD DNB exam. So, let us first begin with the theoretical aspect. So, the theory examination as we have already seen that there are four theory papers. So, there are mainly four theory papers. So, the paper one comprises of questions from general pathology, immunopathology and cytopathology. Okay. 
so cytology and general pathology as well as immunology they are forming part of paper number 1 whereas the paper number 2 is mainly concerned with systemic histopathology okay paper number 3 concerns with hematology blood banking that is the transfusion medicine along with that laboratory medicine that is nothing but the clinical pathology and paper number 4 comprises of your recent advances along with that whatever latest updates uh, updates are there in the field of pathology including the who updates in different sections or different chapters so all of these important portions are included in paper 4 sometimes the journal club topics or important articles from the journal clubs are also included in the paper 4 now this is just a rough division of the different subjects in md pathology but always remember that what happens that there is always some overlap for example questions from paper 3 might be asked in paper 1 but it is not like the paper 1 will completely have questions from paper 3 maybe one question you know by chance from paper 3 went to paper 1 similarly question from paper 1 can be asked in paper 3 for example cytopathology questions few cytopathology questions can be asked in paper 3 as well so although this division is by and large there but questions from one section may be asked in another section for example question from paper 2 might be asked in paper number 4 and vice versa it might be there as well so this overlap is always there in between the different papers it is very important for you to pass all the four papers individually now we are going to discuss about so as and when we are discussing the papers so the first paper is the general pathology i am also going to discuss which are the books that you have to read now it is very important that you just have 3 years of time okay and though you have thousands of reading material okay you cannot go through all the books so you have to be very specific about your books because 3 years time is not enough to master md pathology but you have to you know you have to shape your learning in such a way that you can get the best knowledge out of the best books which are available okay and i will guide you which books you should read in your md pathology so for the general pathology part there is no two opinion you have to read robins and cotrans pathologic basis of disease the 10th edition which is a two volume set okay now there is an international edition there is a southeast asian edition so there is not much difference between the international and southeast asian edition the southeast asian edition is mainly meant for the developing countries like india pakistan nepal bangladesh bhutan and over here the cost is a little bit less as compared to the international edition so you should always buy the southeast asian edition okay so this is how the southeast asian edition looks like this is the robins and cotrans pathological basis of disease that is the 10th edition now coming to the cytopathology which is also included in paper number 1 now here there are two very important books okay one is your pranav des diagnostic cytology now the third edition has also come up and then we are having the oral cytology that is the fifth edition now if you ask me that sir why you have given me two books now both the books are equally important now i will tell you the importance of both the books now if you have to read the cytopathology to understand cytology and for interpretation of these slides orals is the best book it is the best book to understand practical because it will give you a very good idea about how to you know appreciate the different morphological features and what is the you know what is the meaning of those important features okay so orals is the best book to learn cytopathology having said that pranav's day it is not a bad book it is also a good book it is in fact more easy as compared to orals but understanding of pranav this cytology is better after you read orals and then you go to pranav day now why have i also given pranav day over here the importance of pranav day is that that along with the cytology part okay pranav day has also given a lot of molecular pathology pa aspect they have also discussed different aspects like quality you know quality control and lab management you know management of waste disposal then the molecular features of different disorders telepathology so certain extra topics okay which are asked in the exams they are also discussed in pranav day that is why the pranav day diagnostic cytology is very important from those aspects okay but for understanding of the cytopathology oral cytology is very important so that is why i say that both the books are very important okay so this is how the new pranav des diagnostic cytology the third edition which is out looks like okay and this is how your fifth edition of your orals and ferrets fine needle aspiration looks like this is 
your classical South Asia edition. Okay, this is a Southeast Asia edition which is available at a cheaper price. Then we are going to understand which book. Now, here comes the paper number 2 that is the systemic pathology. Okay, paper number 2. Now, you can follow any book that suits you. But if you ask me, the recommended books okay, for systemic pathology are number 1, the Fletcher's 5th edition of Diagnostic Histopathology. Over here, all the tumor conditions along with the differential diagnosis are discussed in details and Fletcher's is one of the best books to understand the morphology of a particular tumor. And not only that, they have integrated the molecular features along with the clinical features and the differential diagnosis beautifully. Okay, Rosai and Ackerman 11th edition is the latest one and it is also a good book. But it is a book to be read by, you know, post MDs. Having said that, in from Rosai Ackerman, the non-neoplastic conditions or the non-tumor, non-neoplastic conditions are very well given from Rosai Ackerman. So, there are certain, uh, you know, certain topics like non-neoplastic lymph nodes, okay, or pediatric renal tumors, they are given exceptionally well in Rosai Ackerman. So, Rosai Ackerman, you should read the non-neoplastic part from the Rosai Ackerman and from the Fletcher's, you should read all the tumors. Now, having said that, 80 to 90 percent of your syllabus, systemic histopathology will comprise of tumors. So, Fletcher's should take most of your time, okay. Fletcher's should take most of your time. Now, along with that, you have the WHO blue books for individual systems. For example, there is a CNS, hematolymphoid, that is for hematology you are having. Then, for example, for female genital tract, for MGT, okay, endocrine organs, then even for the skin you are having. So, different, uh, you know, different, uh, uh, you know, systems are having their own WHO. And right now, the fifth edition of WHO of all these topics, okay, they are very current. Now, you don't have to read the individual chapters, but what you have to read from WHO is the different classifications, okay. The classifications and the updates that has come with every edition. This becomes very important, okay. So, WHO has given the classification and the updates very nicely and this uh, WHO is important for this aspect. Then some students, they prefer to read Sternberg. It is equally well. The good thing about Sternberg is that, that both the tumor along with the non-neoplastic part, both of them are considered in the single book, okay. So, you might read these books, but always remember, you don't have to buy all these books, but at least one of them, either Fletcher's, Rosai Ackerman and Sternberg's, either of these three, you buy one of those books and treat that as a Bible book. My preference is that, that you should buy Fletcher's, okay. Fletcher's, you should, you can buy the Xerox of Fletcher's, which is available approximately around 6 to 7,000 rupees, you can get Fletcher's. Rosai Ackerman, if you have bought Fletcher's, okay, you can also get the Xerox of Rosai Ackerman, which will cost around the same, okay. Along with that, you can, you know, if you are not interested in Fletcher's or Rosai Ackerman, then you might just go for Sternberg. Now, in either of these cases, you might buy just one of the books and you can use the PDFs. All the PDFs are easily available, okay. PDFs are easily available. There are different telegram channels and I also have Simply Pathology also have a dedicated telegram channel where all the latest edition PDFs are available as well. So, this is the book. This is the Diagnostic Histopathology of the Tumors by Fletcher's. Okay, very important book for the tumors. And this is the Rosa and Ackerman that is the 11th edition that is Rosa and Ackerman which is very important book for the non-tumor content. Okay. Now, along with that, this is your, this is one of the WHO blue books. See, you can see the fifth edition book over here. This is basically your central nervous system. Now, having said that, having, re, you know, said about these books, although you will read this book, systemic pathology part, but before you go towards the systemic pathology in this book, first you have to read about Robbins. So, first you should read the systemic pathology from 10th edition of Robbins. After you get a basic idea, then you should go towards the bigger books, okay. This is the systemic pathology part. Now, after the systemic pathology, okay, there are certain books that you have to read for hematology, for blood banking that is transfusion medicine and laboratory medicine that is nothing but your clinical pathology part. Now, one of the most important things over here, okay, the two most important and the must-have books for your curriculum are the first two books, that is the Kothalkar textbook of hematology 
and the Kothalkar Essentials of Clinical Pathology or Laboratory Medicine. Now, both these books, why I am telling you? Because you have to read many books and you don't have the time and liberty to read each and every book. Okay. So, that is why the Kothalkar textbook of hematology and the essentials of clinical pathology, both of them are very, you know, they are very good books. They are based out of, uh, you know, very nice textbooks and they are very easy to understand and you can complete them in a very fast manner. Okay, so that is why I always tell to read Kothalkar's hematology as well as essential of clinical pathology. Now, uh, an another very important clinical pathology book that is your Desi and Lewis. This you should also have and you should use it as a reference book. Okay, it is, it is a very good and excellent book. Okay, if you can read Desi Lewis, nothing like it. But for most of you, I would recommend to start with the Kothalkar's both textbook of hematology as well as clinical pathology. After that, for hematology, for the different criteria, right now, the latest fifth edition of the WHO hematolymphoid tumors is going to come and there are several changes that have occurred. So, the criteria have to be seen from WHO hematolymphoid tumor. Also, there is a very nice book that is called as Tejinder Singh. So, I would suggest do not read the text from Tejinder, only look at the diagrams from the Tejinder Singh. If you are seeing only the diagrams from Tejinder Singh, you have to see. So, these are the most important books for hematology that you have to read. So, this is the Essentials of Hematology by Kothalkar. That is the third edition which is available. The latest edition is third edition. And this is the textbook of hematology. And another book that is available is the Essential of Clinical Pathology. That is again by the same author that is Kothalkar. And that is very important. The second edition is available. And this is a very, very nice book. Okay. So, as of now, the only the second edition of this is available. That is for Kothalkar. So, these two books are must buy books for your hematology and clinical pathology. Having said that, you also have what is called as Desi Lewis. Now, Desi Lewis, if you see, it is one of the best books for your clinical pathology. Okay. And it should always be used as a reference book. Okay. It is a reference book. You can always quote Desi and Lewis. Okay. Now, having said that, now comes the paper number four. Okay. We will see the paper number four. Over here. In the paper 4, we are going to discuss about the recent advances and the applied aspects. Now, very importantly, in your curriculum, you will have all these postings. Along with the postings, you will also have multiple seminars. Okay. You will have journal clubs. Okay. You will be attending certain CMEs. Okay. You will present certain posters, papers, or you might even send your articles or your thesis for your publication. Okay. So, all these things, okay, they are coming under the applied recent or updates. Okay. So, in the recent advances, what are the questions that is coming? So, let us see. So, the recent advance, especially recent advance 23rd and 24th is very important. Progress 6th and 7th edition. The recent advances, uh, hematology 1, 2 and 3, last 5 year question papers of your own college is very important or your own university is very important because usually the recent advanced questions, okay, most of them, they are coming from the last 5 year question paper. So, you should always solve last 5 year recent advances very nicely. Then the latest WHO recent updates that has come, maybe any chapter, okay. So, updates from that can come in your exam. And your journal club topics, your seminar topics in your respective college might be asked in your recent advances, okay. And the CMEs that you attend, okay. So, the CMEs uh, is very important for you to attend the CMEs, especially the annual state CMEs that is being conducted that is very important to attend because via those CMEs, okay, some important updates you will come to know and that can form important exam question, okay. So, I hope this much is clear to you and you also know which books you have to read, okay. So, this was the theoretical aspect of your MD DNB course. Now, coming to some other books that you also have to, you know, buy or get printed. One of them is for the grossing. Now, for grossing, this is a very nice and very, you know, nicely written book for the grossing of surgical oncology specimen. This is the Tata Manual, okay, by that, uh, which is issued by the Tata Memorial Hospital, Bombay. Okay, so this book also the PDF of the same is, is uploaded in the Telegram channel. So you can go and you can subscribe to my Simply Pathology channel. Okay, 
now some other books now for example in the first year okay you want to understand the basics of histology you want to understand the, the basic and the normal slides so for that you can see the Witter's functional histology and after that you can see the Witter's basic pathology before you start with the systemic histopathology okay so this is a book for the first year that is the Witter's and very importantly these are very important books now tissue processing is a part of your curriculum and also part of your exam so this pranab des basic and advanced laboratory techniques in histopathology and cytology is one of the very nice books okay and it is very simple and written in a very lucid language so this is a must for the tissue techniques and also this is another book for the tissue processing techniques and histological techniques but this just like the dc lewis this should be used as a reference book it should not be used as a main book because it is again very difficult okay now, having discussed all the theoretical aspect and having discussed all the books that you are going to read in theory, we are now going to discuss about the practical aspect. Okay? Remember, the practical examination in pathology is conducted over a period of two days. I am not saying that. It is the NMC guideline and even for us, it was for two days. Okay? So, what are the different clinical sections that you are going to face in your exams? Let us try and understand those sections. The first important station in your practical exam will be clinical pathology, wherein you will be given a clinical case scenario. For example, you will be given a case, case scenario of nephrotic syndrome. Therein, you will have to perform certain biochemical investigations. Okay, you, For example, you will be you know, asked to you do complete urine analysis. So, urine for sugar, urine for uh, you know, proteins, you might have to do. Similarly, a patient of diabetic ketoacidosis okay, might be there and you might be asked to perform the urine ketone body test. So, whatever biochemical test you have done in your MBBS, the same things will be done over here. That is clinical pathology and all the vivas will be based out of your Pothalkar uh, essentials of clinical pathology. Okay? So, this will be your one station. So, one station, one viva will be based on clinical pathology. Having said that, you will have another table for hematology. Now, in hematology, you will be given certain hematological case. You might be provided with a slide. You might be given a peripheral blood smear. You might be given along with that a bone marrow aspirate or even a bone marrow biopsy along with that. A, cl a clinical scenario might be given to you. For example, they might give you a case scenario, you know, that is for thalassemia or they might give you a clinical case scenario for uh, iron deficiency anemia or they might give you a clinical case scenario for multiple myeloma. So, there can be different n number of things, okay? And not only that, they might also give you a complete CBC or a hemogram and ask you to decipher and ask you to, you know, uh, tell about the different. For example, they might ask you about the RBC indices, MCV, MCH, MCHC like that. Or they might give you certain coagulation exercise. They might bring certain charts like the platelet function test, PFT charts might be brought. Osmotic fragility testing charts might be given electrophoresis chart, HPLC charts, all these charts might be brought by the examiner and kept for your exam. So, this is your second table that is your hematology. Then one separate section is for transfusion medicine wherein you will be asked to perform blood grouping. Might be you might be asked to perform slide method or you might be asked to perform the tube method of blood grouping and after that you might also be asked to perform cross matching but usually cross matching they are not asked. You might also be asked, but you should know the procedure in details. So, there are different types of, you know, there is a separate section on transfusion medicine, wherein what is cross matching, what is antibody screening, what are the blood components, okay. So, you might be given a blood component and you might be asked, okay, to discuss about the different blood components, adverse blood transfusion reactions or clinical case scenario might also be asked. You have to, you know, or, you know, also discuss the different types of blood group systems and what are the, you know, more advanced methods of blood grouping like the gel card technique, okay. All the new techniques you have to discuss. So, this is your transfusion medicine forming one of the parts. The fourth important part of your practical exam will be your histopathology, wherein you will be given around 12 to 15 cases of histopathology, 5 to 8 cases of cytopathology will be given to you with relevant histories. You will be given around 5 minutes time is given per slide. In that time, you have to see the slide. You have to write your description along with the diagnosis. Okay. Along with that, you might also be asked to perform staining. So, wherever you are posted, for example, if you are posted in histopathology, try and do the hematoxylin eosin stain. 
and also special stain for example pass stain reticulin stain these are also spe some special stain okay you might also be asked over here in histopathology okay uh, to you know stain some cytological slides like mgg staining or pap staining so all the test or staining routine staining procedures you should perform with your own hand similarly in hematology also i forgot to tell you you might be asked to you know do a classical peripheral blood smear you have to make the smear you have to also you you have to carry out the staining the leishman gm sustaining okay so you will be asked to do that also okay having said that you should be also conversant with your histopathology techniques separate viva separate thing is for histopathology techniques for example you might be asked about the tissue processing you might be asked to you know cut okay uh, with the help of microtome to make sections and how to make the sections and then to stain the same section with H&E staining. So this is very important, histopathology techniques. I already told you that Pranab, this book is very nice for the histopathology technique. Now also very important is your autopsy and your gross pathology. So basically when you are doing the grossing, okay, so basically you are performing certain sections for each and individual organ. So in the exam, usually the autopsy and the gross pathology viva, they are clubbed together okay and you are asked questions regarding the gross pathology like for example you might be given a uh, uterus then they might ask you that how you will you know uh, uh, you know cut open the uterus for fixation what pre grossing techniques you will do what are the post grossing techniques how you are going to you know you know uh, describe the particular organ on what features which sections you will take what is the importance of those sections certain important point relevant points from the gross pathology will be asked Similarly, with autopsy, you might be given an organ like the heart, okay, and then you might be asked how autopsy of the heart is carried out, which sections you will take, okay, what are the important relevant autopsy findings for, uh, for different, you know, and what are your differential diagnosis from autopsy. So This is also important part of your viva, and along with that, certain basic sciences will be there. So, certain charts and spots will be there, like certain electron micrographs will be there. So, for example, uh, your renal system that is there. So there might be, they might keep a chart of nephritic or nephrotic, some second conditions. They might ask you to identify the subendothelial deposits, or you, they might ask you to identify sub epithelial deposits. Certain electron microscopic findings, for example, they, they might keep a certain tumor. So electron dense granules that we see of neurosecretory granules in your neuroendocrine tumors. So you might be given charts for that. Then certain PCR chart results of PCR might be given. Some uh, you know uh, blood grouping by gel uh, agglutination technology. Okay. So you might be given certain charts like that and you might be asked to you know interpret those the results of that some immunofluorescence pictures might be given for example in case of vesicule bullous lesions what kind of immunofluorescence patterns you are seeing in the renal conditions what kind of immunofluorescence patterns you are seeing what is granular pattern what is linear pattern so all these are different patterns some certain charts will be given to you for that now not only that they might give certain charts for important cyto uh, cytochemical stains for example, myeloperoxidase staining is there, PAS staining is there. For you know, these are cytochemical stains in hematology. So they might bring certain charts or certain IHC charts they might bring for ER, PR, HER2, NEW. Of a common chart, these are not very difficult. So these charts will be given to you. And also, micro teaching is one of the parts of your exam in practical. You have to teach, okay? And teaching is a part of curriculum in MD, DNB pathology. You have to teach the undergraduate students along with that uh, yeah, you have to teach the paramedical student to the you know dental students as well okay now this is not over here your practical is not completed all these things should not you know there are four sets of examiners in your exam two internal two external is there so jointly you will be evaluated by all the examiners okay now after having performed all this practical in the end there is a grand viva okay now over here the questions are asked to you on your thesis and your research methodology and what all you know test you have done how you have conducted what are your you know result variables then and related with your you know dissertation topic or your thesis topic you will be asked certain questions and after that you will be a general viva that is we call it as a grand viva wherein you will be bombarded with questions okay from any and every topic okay so with this your practical exam is going to end and always remember thesis or your dissertation is important for passing if you don't prepare your thesis you cannot pass your md exam this is one of the requirements so having discussed about all these points i just want to i just want to tell you one important thing over here that how is it that you should go about your residency 
So we have already discussed over here so many things. We have discussed the theory, the practical, the thesis, everything. So now you must be thinking, sir, you have told us so many things, how we should go about our residency. Okay, I am not getting an idea. And one very important thing why I told you about all the curriculum, the important thing is that you should know what is expected out of you when you pass out your MD exam. Okay, so these are the things that you should learn in your, your MD exam. Okay. So now I will, you know, shortly tell you about how to go about your residency and what are the things that you should do in your residency. So starting from the first year of your residency, what is it that you should do? The first important thing that when I, whenever you are going in the first year, always remember first time, okay, you will feel depressed. Why you feel depressed? Because the pathology that you have read in the second year and the pathology that you are being, you know, in the MD is totally different. Okay, whatever you expected and whatever you see is not matching and you become tend to become very much depressed and being a first year you have a lot of duties to perform and also you are under your seniors. So as a first year it is very important to keep your mind very cool because first year is the only year you will find a lot of time to complete many topics. Okay, so in the first year you might start with the VTERS. Okay to know the basic normal histology because till you don't know the normal you will not be able to understand the abnormal okay along with that you have to complete the general pathology part very important at least from hematology you should cover rbc disorders along with the blood banking part completely then some amount of time you have to give for your synopsis and you have to you know submit your synopsis to the ethical board till they will not pass you cannot submit your synopsis and you cannot start your thesis work Along with that, you try to read the staining and the tissue processing part from the first year from Pranab Day because you are seeing what process is going on. So, you should be very conversant with the staining and the tissue processing part. Now, along with this, these portions are have been highlighted separately because you have to do these things in the first year, second year, third year. So, all these things will become very, very, you know, repetitive for you. So, you have to read and start cytology from the first year. You have to continue that in the second year and you have to do that in the third year as well. The grossing part, because you will start grossing in the first year, some amount of that. Then second year, mainly you will be involved in grossing. So you have to start reading the grossing from the first year itself. In the second year also and in the third year also you have to continue this part. You have to start the tissue processing part, okay, part of the tissue processing. Okay, you have to start reading the recent advances from the first year. And always I keep a rule for the residents. You should see at least five slides per day okay in your residency okay and from the first year you take out the last five year question papers why it is very important to see the question papers because you will get oriented as to what you know is required or what type of questions are asked and once you see the questions you will understand that what is the importance of my residency what is it that is expected out of you so that is why if you look at the questions then automatically the application of your reading will come into the picture and you have to start reading the clinical pathology also in the first year. So, the last number 5 to 11 points that is there, you have to start from the first year part by part, you shall continue in the second and in the third year. Now, this thing is constant in all the years, okay. You should not read a single subject in one day else you will become bored. You should try and reach, read multiple topics in one day and give at least 2.5 hours per day. I used to read around 2 hours before I used to go to college in the morning hours and 1-1.5 one, one hours I used to read in the evening. Now more important than that is that you have to be very consistent in your studies. It is not like you read one day for 4-5 hours and then for 4-5 days you don't read at all. That is a very bad practice. So You have to read and more important than reading you should revise. That is very important thing. Okay, now coming to the second year, okay, so these seven things is the same, okay, it is the same like the first year, okay, but what is new, you have to start the systemic histopathology, you should complete the WBC and the platelet disorders from hematology that is left, you should start and complete the molecular pathology and you should also read the autopsy. Again, this aspect is very much same, okay, and in the last year, in the last year, you should complete your histopathology in the first six months. You have to complete and submit the thesis. So, 
around two to three months time will go just in the thesis. Again, you should continue with your autopsy part and very important part of cytology, grossing, tissue processing, recent advance, clinical pathology, seeing five slides and solving the five year question paper. This is part of your plan from the first year to the third year. Okay. Remember the last three to four months, you shouldn't touch anything new. The last three to four months is kept only for your revision because you will need this time and trust me, the syllabus is huge. Okay. So, and again, the same concept, try reading multiple subjects in one day and give at least 2.5 hours per day and you have to be consistent. So, with this, we have completed the MD DNB orientation and stay tuned in the next section of our lecture, we are going to discuss in details about our new course that is going to help you to ace your MD DNB residency. So we are very proud to announce the launch of our website Simply Pathology wherein you can access all the videos along with the notes. Thank you very much and stay tuned. As we have already discussed in the first half of this lecture that today is a special day. Why is it special? Because today we are finally launching our website Simply Pathology. Uh, now we are launching for mainly the postgraduate students and later on we are going to launch for undergraduate students as well. For those of you who don't know us, Simply Pathology was launched approximately four years back and we have been catering to the postgraduate students for the past four years. We have had 100% past percent percentage results for the postgraduate students. Along with that, we have been successful in producing more than 20 gold medalists in MD and DNB Pathology. So, I am just going to take you into this tour and show you our new website wherein you can see all the courses, okay? And you can see the testimonials as well. If you go over here, if you view the courses from the outer aspect, if you see, then we are having two types of courses over here. One is your postgraduate MD DNB course and one is your free demo version. So, if you wish, you can go directly into the free version and you can see all the videos and the PDFs that are available. I am just going to demonstrate how our new website looks and how you can access all the videos. So over here with my account, I am going to log into this particular uh, website. So here is our website and this is my course, the postgraduate MD DNB pathology course. So let me just start my course. So this is how it looks when you are going to go inside. Okay. So if you see the details of the course has been given and if you see the curriculum over here, we have divided it under four main broad headings as of this point of time. So there is cytopathology, general pathology, systemic histopathology, along with that we are having hematology as well. So for example, okay, if you click on here, so you can see that there are different, you know, videos and the best thing is that, that after each video, you are having the PDF of the same. So you can directly download the PDF from this site and you can also directly print it. So, for example, if I want to see a particular video, so for example, I am going to click on this particular video and let's see the video is going to load. So, here is the video that, here is the classical video that we want to watch. So, let us click on this particular video. So, you can directly go and you can play the videos, okay, directly from our, you know, site. And the best part of this is, so for example, over here, we are playing the postgraduate lecture, the cytopathology lecture on cervical cytology. So after you have, you know, played this particular lecture, okay, you can always click on the PDF that is just next to that particular note. And there is a very important, so this is the particular, you know, this is the particular PDF, okay, this is the particular notes for that particular video. So you can directly go, you can see all the notes directly, not only that you have the option over here for download. And if I click on that, if you see on the left hand side, okay, that particular PDF has been downloaded, not only that directly you have an option for printing as well. So this is how you can see the entire course at one particular place. And these are just, uh, uh, you know, we are just starting off at this point of time. And you know that any kind of residency or any kind of science is not at all limited. You have lots of, you know, updates that is coming up. So in addition to all these four important sections of cytopathology, general pathology, systemic histopathology and hematology, we are going to add many more sections like a section, a separate dedicated section for WHO updates will be there. Then a separate section for basic histopathology will be added. A separate section for different exam slide preparation will be added as well. Okay. 
So this is about our newly launched course and I hope you are going to join and immensely benefit. You can check out our course and our uh, you know website address link is simplypathology.teachmore.com and the link has been given in the description box. Thank you very much for watching this particular video.